Jigs guy. What's up, man? Just making sure you can hear me, right? <laughs> I don't want any uh, audio problems like last week. Even though they were minor, apparently. Looking back at the VOD. So, we're good. AJ, what's up, man? How's it going, guys? How's your uh, Tuesday been going so far? I had to check and make sure today was Tuesday before saying that. <laughs> it, it's like so easy to lose track of time nowadays. Hey, how's it going, pseudonym? Hey, Jigs, was wondering. <laughs> uh, good lord. I'll wait a minute or two before we get started here. <coughs> Here but no audio? That's okay, say off. Welcome. Yo, how's it going, Carbon? I took your suggestion in mind. We'll see how well it works. <laughs> that way we don't have to chance possible shitty internet. It's weird, though, because usually my internet was okay. So, I guess we just won't rely on it this time. <laughs> I think it'll work out fine. Took about the same amount of time to make results as per usual, so it's not like it takes any more time. Of course, no one else here has any idea what I'm talking about, so that's kind of funny. <coughs> Wasn't wondering. Oh, okay, Zyabler. I think I think you're the only one that's not wondering. Also, hello. How are you? Alrighty, so I think I'll get started. So, uh, welcome to uh, the week two results for the task series. Um, so let's get started. So, uh, starting with the task design, um, one thing that I definitely noticed after making the task is I probably should have only had it as bust one nut. It made the objective pretty unreliable for the most part. The idea when designing the task was it's a long task and nuts are spread out throughout Wooded Kingdom. So surely you could break two throughout the run it would you know work out okay but apparently not apparently it wasn't a very good objective there was one person that still used it but didn't really score very well so uh that's okay i'm glad the objective at least got used but it's no big deal activate a p-switch was a pretty good objective um you know you just hit the p-switch it's interesting though because you can use cappy to hit the p-switch and we will see that in use to um speed things up a little bit in some of the later runs make three robots flinch pretty simple just run into them throw a cappy at them bounce on them yada yada um activate another checkpoint this is a interesting objective that is uh, specific to this task um yes that is you jigs you broke nuts um the checkpoint was specific to this task i had it in the original Wooded kingdom task in season one but i messed up and that task had respawn which was stupid, because it, why would you have respawn with activate another checkpoint when you didn't have a checkpoint to begin with? I should have just said, if you respawn, you should activate two checkpoints, but that also doesn't make any sense. But anyways, enough uh, dwaddling on the past. Um, basically, uh, this objective was used because Wooded is a very overlay vertical kingdom, and there's a lot of points where you can just fall down onto another checkpoint. So it works out in this kingdom, not only because Wooded is very vertical, but also just because this task was very long. So it's almost guaranteed that you were going to go enough distance to get to another checkpoint. So uh, this was a very useful objective, and it was used a lot. Collect two regionals, pretty self-explanatory. There are two regionals in particular that I want to point out that were really, really good. 
Um, I kind of overlooked them when designing the task, but they were really, really good. Um, and they were used a lot in terms, along with the area that I'm talking about, but we'll get into that. Uh, spawn a heart, pretty simple. <coughs> oh, I, I just realized I forgot an objective. Uh, hit or break a block, this actually goes with the spawn a heart. So my idea with this was that, um, the hearts in this kingdom, a lot of them are in blocks. So, um, it kind of made sense to me to have spawn a heart and also hitting or breaking a block. Because for the most part, you could pair that with the heart. And it just made a lot of sense to do, so that was cool. Um, capture and uproot, pretty self-explanatory. You could also potentially combo this into breaking a gray block. Um, we definitely saw that once or twice, so that's pretty useful. Uh, collect a rocket flower. This is kind of out of the way, but there's two sets of rocket flowers in Wooded. One by the Summit Path and the other down by the shop. I believe the one down by the shop was used by one person. Oh, wait, no. No, wait, no. Both sets were used. Uh, both sets were used. Another run used the one by Summit Path, so... That was technically used objective, but again, I think, like, uh, Bust Two Nuts, it just wasn't that good of an objective. Uh, Spawner Collect a Moon, not from a nut. This makes a lot of sense. Obviously, you wouldn't want it to be, uh, spawning or collecting the moon from the nut, so... Because... That's kind of dumb, because you already broke the nut, and you can just spawn or collect the moon. So, it was a different moon in this case, and there were several different moons that were used. We'll get into that. And then the last... <coughs> and then the last one was grab two unique objects. This could be, um, grab two unique objects you could climb. This would be two different objects, like a pull in a tree, pull in a vine, a vine in a tree, stuff like that. And there's plenty of objects to climb Wooded Kingdom, so that definitely got its use as well. Alright, moving on to the results, now that I've explained the rundown of how to design this task worked. Alright, we are beginning results. Uh, we're gonna go about it a little bit differently this time, because, um, my internet last week was very subpar, and I didn't like that, and neither did you guys, so we're gonna go about it a little bit differently this, this time, so... In last place, there were 13 submissions, by the way. We got Jigs Guy with a time of 21.73. My mic almost fell over. <laughs> Anyways, let's take... Oh, Jesus. I was not expecting that. Uh, no, no one saw anything. I did not expect it to do that. Are you serious? All right, well, now you guys know who placed where, so this is kind of pointless now. I was kind of afraid that was going to happen, but that's life, I guess. Anyways, looking at Jigs Guy's run, I wanted a way to, you know, be able to exit like that, but I guess not. So taking a look at Jigs Guy's run, he did break nuts. He's got a low battery on his Procon. That's not ideal. Um, kind of like this run, but that's okay. He captures an uproot, rolls a bit, does some pretty clean movement over to the Scarecrow, hits the block that has a heart. Hits a few robots and spawns a moon. And I have no idea what the heck is going on in the corner over there, but that's okay. Let's run through this one more time, because there is a little bit to unpack. You think I saw anything? I hope not. Ugh, that sucks, because... Uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. Anyways. <coughs> so, Jigs Guy was the only one that decided to bust some nuts. And, uh, like I said, it's, uh, my fault for overlooking how long the objective would take, considering the distance between two nuts is kind of a lot. So, that's completely my bad. I'm sorry. Um, overall, I feel like JCI's run was pretty good for what it, you know, did. Um, I don't think the route was pretty optimal, but I like the synergy and the way he moved around the kingdom. So, that's cool. Um, I'm gonna try and not look at this, because it does reveal a few things. I think I remember who's in 12th place. In 12th place, we have AJ, who got a time of 21 seconds flat and earned 5 points. I'm really disappointed that I didn't think that hitting the escape key would reveal things. I don't like that. I'm gonna have to do something about that if I plan to do this next week. Um, anyways, AJ's run! 
Um, starts from this checkpoint, like Jig's Yai, but decides to capture the uproot immediately. There is an uproot right there. Decides to collect a few rocket flowers. Uh, spawns block with a heart. Regionals. Then captures the Sherm and decides to bust open that crate all the way in the distance, which spawns a moon. It's a very interesting route, but it definitely poses a few issues. Um, part of the problem here is, um, so capturing the uproot is fine. I think his movement getting to the rocket flowers could have been a little bit faster, but, um, overall it's not that bad. A long jump isn't exactly ideal. Probably could have done, like, a roll cancel or something. And, yeah, just capturing the Sherm and hitting that crate honestly wasn't that optimal. I like the idea, though, and it was very unique in terms of submissions, but not very fast. And I think we're gonna see that a lot with this task, because this task had a lot of routes, but realistically, only two or three of them were realistically ideal to get a good placement. So, moving on, we have 11th place. <laughs> if mine is shown, then sorry for the atrocious quality. Yes, yours will be shown eventually. We'll get to yours, Marble. Um, 11th place was a Treyu. With a time of, I'm trying to remember without looking at the thing, 11 point, no, not 11, I'm stupid, 20.80. If it was 11, that would be pretty freaking amazing, but not quite. Sorry, Trey. Anyways, a Trey user run. Um, so he goes off the side, still uses the same checkpoint as Jigs and AJ, decides to hit the P-switch, drops straight down. We are going to see that pretty good amount, goes into the checkpoint, then decides to, you know, go into this cave, collect that moon, collect the rocket flowers down below, and does a spin throw to spawn the heart. So, overall, I feel like this run, um, suffers because it's traveling a very long distance. Um, he definitely could have decided to fit some more objectives within the space that he had, and I think that overall would have saved him more than enough time to get a better placement. Because his general route is okay, but the objectives that he picks to go about it doesn't exactly make a lot of sense. So, unfortunately, that definitely puts Atreyu's run towards the bottom. Um, and like I said, don't worry if you were a bottom placement this week. Remember, I do drop one task for the season overall. So... Do not be alarmed if you placed badly this week. You can still contend for a top position for the season. 10th place. Who was 10th place? Uh, my memory is uh, the only thing that's allowing me to do this right now. 10th place was um, Sayloff. Sayloff had a time of 19.6 and earned a total of 10 points. Um, so let's take a look at Sayloff's run. <laughs> Sayloff decides to start from the summit checkpoint, interestingly enough. Oh, two people use the set. Nice. So, summit checkpoint, backs away, collects some regionals, just decides to hit some um, NPCs on the way up, activates the iron road checkpoint, breaks some blocks, uncaptures the uproot, wall jumps, hits a third NPC, and the P-switch. I like the idea of this run, but... I think it suffers from a little bit of, um, what's the word? I guess padding, to say the least, because he collects these rocket flowers, but then kills all of his speed as soon as he captures the uproot. I just feel like he could have went about this a little bit differently. Again, there was another P-switch right next to the tree, uh, and next to the tree in the pole, and the other regionals. That spot was really good. And it's possible that if he used that, he could have squeezed in, like, a couple more seconds. Well, he could have squeezed off a couple more seconds. But, overall, I like the idea of this run. It definitely has a general path that it's trying to go for. But, again, I think capturing the uproot like that just kills all of his speed, and that's just disappointing. And, obviously, he hits the P-switch last because it spawns the cutscene. That was not exactly a P-switch that I expected to be used, but it did end up being used surprisingly, so uh, good job Sayloff for making that work. 
In ninth place, we have... Who is ninth place? God, I'm trying to remember without looking at the thing. I'm so sorry that you guys had to see that. I'm going to have to work out something to not have that happen. I believe ninth place was Marble Runner? Yes, Marble Runner was ninth place. What was this time? This time was 19.3, and he earned 12 points overall. Now, Marble's Run is what I would like to call equal quality on steroids. So, we got a switch light, and he's zooming in, and I can barely see what's happening. You guys can barely see what's happening, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure he completed all the objectives. He decides to capture and uproot down there. A couple of people did that. I think it was pretty optimal. Um, hits the checkpoint, hits that heart block. We're going to see that one a lot. I think we already saw it once from Atreyu, but that uh, heart block is right next to uh, a checkpoint and a pull. And there's regionals below the pole as well. So, uh, yeah, this is eagle mode on steroids. I, I have no idea what's happening. When I was timing this run, I was like, I'm just going to take a general guess of when this starts. Because, look at this. H how, how am I supposed to know what frame Mario is able to move? I can't see anything, dude. It's like a giant glare and everything. But, overall, he collects stuff. The run's pretty good. Yeah, shaky hands indeed. That also doesn't help. But we can generally see what he's doing, and I guess that's okay. He definitely lost some time at the end there because he took a little too much time to grab the pole. He uh, dropped a bit before grabbing the pole. Also, I didn't mean to close that. Do do do. In eighth place, who was eighth place? Eighth place was Snowblind. Snowblind is uh, kind of new to task. Task. Apparently, he only uh, participated in picture tasks before this. But eighth place for um, uh, first like you know movement esque task submission, not bad at all. Let's take a look at what Snowblind did. Uh, what was this time? What was this time? Eighteen point nine. Eighteen point nine, and he earned fourteen points. We are really proving how good my memory is. Anyways. So he takes a similar approach to Marble, actually. Starts at that same checkpoint. We are definitely going to see that checkpoint a couple more times. That was the other checkpoint that was really good here. So let's break this down because I didn't even talk about the run. I was just talking about the checkpoint. <coughs> you did complete the objectives. That's great. So <coughs> I'm choking over here. He hits a vine. Uh, hits uh, some of the NPCs. Uh, he waits a while to capture that uproot. I think that definitely lost him a lot of time. But he grabs the pole a lot quicker than Marble, so that definitely salvages this run. And I think he had a slightly slower beginning as well. Yeah, this beginning definitely could have been a little bit faster. Um, he definitely could have sped that up a lot. But he decides to ground pound into the gray block, which definitely saves some time. Because he could have hit it with the uproot, but I think ground pounding into it was probably a little bit faster. This was probably the hardest task for me to route. Yeah, I might have went a little bit overboard on routing this task. Sorry. Anyways, that's a snow blinds run. Pretty good for a first, like, actual movement S task run. 8th place is very solid. He earned 14 points. In 7th place, who was 7th place? Who was 7th place? I believe this was Kill a Dragon, and Kill a Dragon had a time of 18.06, 18.06, and he earned 16 points. So let's take a look at Kill a Dragon's run. Starting from the checkpoint again, it's very similar from it's very similar to Marbles and um, Snowblinds. <coughs> Ledge grab there, not very optimal. But he captures the uproot a little bit faster, so I think that definitely helped improve his time a bit. And, uh, yeah, there's not really too much to say about this because the previous two runs were incredibly similar to this. Like, the route is pretty much the same. Yeah, hit some NPCs. That, that ledge grab definitely cost him some time. I guarantee you if he didn't ledge grab... Probably would have gotten like a mid-17. So, overall, it's a solid run, though. 
and uh, Killy Dragon did pretty good. In sixth place, we have uh, who was sixth place? Joseph. Joseph uh, is new to task, but he's very good at the game. He's a crazy good free runner, um, and he's getting better at task. Uh, he placed tenth in the first one, and he got six in this one, so he is definitely improving. Let's take a look at Joseph Joseph's run. He got a time of 17.9 using the Summit Path. Wow, a lot of people use that, those rocket flyers. I don't know why I'm so freaking blind. Uh, anyways, he decides to only collect one and use his momentum into a turnaround to um, hit the checkpoint. Uses the uproot to break the block. And like I said, this area right here is so good. You got two things to climb right next to each other. Two regionals. And a P-switch, just a hit, just like that. It's so good. Um, this area was definitely a little bit overlooked when I was designing the task, I'm not gonna lie. I knew it existed, but I forgot there were two regionals on that tree. So, good job, me. But that's okay. Overall, I think the run was really solid. <coughs> solid? I like the synergy that he has going here. The rocket flower helps him climb the ramp quickly, obviously. And the turnaround after hitting the checkpoint was very solid. It allows him to catch the uproot incredibly quickly. Uh, using the gray, using the uproot to break the gray block, maybe not the most optimal. I feel like maybe could have been a little bit faster to just break it with Cappy, but that's okay. Uh, overall, it's a really good submission. Sixth place with a time of 17.9. And that earned him 17 points. In 5th place, we have Carbon. Carbon earned uh, 20 points and had a time of 16.5. He was the only one that used this checkpoint right next to Torque Drift. This rat is very cool. Um, when I was watching this the first time, I was like, no one's going to use that checkpoint. And then somebody used that checkpoint, so I was pretty impressed. It has the similar idea where you're able to fall down to another checkpoint which makes it very optimal and there's also that brick block with the heart so let's break this down a little bit more there's also an npc right next to um the entrance which definitely helps because he's just able to spawn in and just hit the npc immediately drops down hits the heart block rolls into another npc rolls into another npc collects the frs moon Hits the P-switch, activating the flower road, and then goes down and captures this uproot. So, overall, the route's very interesting. But, honestly, there's not too much to say about its movement. It's pretty clean. There's nothing wow-inducing. But, um, overall, I'd say just the run is really clean. And I like the synergy that's going on here. Like I said, I feel like a broken record at this point. Because I've talked about how uh, using Wooded's verticality to its advantage... Um, we've gone over this, you can just fall into another area which has another checkpoint and other objects. So, well done to Carbon, earning himself 5th place in this task, and 20 points, with a time of 16.5. Now, to your top 4. In 4th place, we have Pseudonym. Pseudonym had a time of 15.24? Yeah, 15.24, earning himself 23 points. Uh, let's take a look at Pseudonym's run. Pseudonym using the Iron Road checkpoint. Very, very original. Got the uproot. <coughs> into the pull grab. Into the regionals collection. Into hitting the P-switch. Into rolling down. We've kind of seen this already. As you can tell, it's uh, basically... Um, uh, who's my call? It's a Treyu's run, but it opts to basically squeeze all the objectives in to that checkpoint. So, by doing this, Pseudonym saves a crap ton of time over Atreyu. Roughly five seconds. Um, he's able to climb two trees, collect regionals, hit a P-switch, and just, yeah, it's really clean. There's not really too much to say about this. Um, I guess one thing to note about the beginning is I really do like that roll cancel that he does at the beginning. I bet that was, uh, kind of hard to do at the start of every run. Probably killed some runs. So, yeah, I like the synergy going on here. I really do sound like a broken record. All these tasks are exactly the same, except not really. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Anyways, in third place, we got 
Eagle Gamer. Now we're getting serious because Eagle's time was a whopping 14.07 seconds, uh, and he earned himself 27 points. Let's take a look at Eagle's run. The top three were pretty close in time. Ah, uh, yes, the lovely Eagle quality. So, <coughs> grabs a vine, spawns that moon, hits those two NPCs. Hits a third NPC into a spin throw. I really like that, because that spin throw allowed him to not only hit the NPC, but also activate the checkpoint. That was very smooth. I really like that idea. E yeah, exactly. Synergy, synergy, synergy. No shit, Jigs. But yeah, those uh, two NPCs are nice, because they were just right in a row. You could just hit them immediately. And yeah, grab some pull, grab some regionals. It's, uh, very similar to, uh, who's gonna call it? Uh, Snowblind, Marbles, and Killy Dragons. It's similar to all three of those, but opts to do the objectives in a way where he doesn't have to drop down to the area with the uproot and the gray block. And that, that saves him a massive amount of time compared to those runs. Roughly three to four seconds. So, well done, Eagle, for getting a time of 14.07 third place, and 27 points. Very solid run indeed. Now things are getting heated. <coughs> In second place, we got Blip. Blip earned himself a time of 13.9 seconds using a similar route to Eagles. Honestly, I'm not really too sure what was too different between these. It looked like just a little bit more optimization, choosing to hit all three of his NPCs at the top. Uh, that's honestly the only difference. I don't really see any other major difference. But, uh, yeah. Blip, hitting some NPCs. Spawning that moon. I like the vector that he does down there. I think Eagle did that too, I just didn't, uh, note on it. He just jumps and does a really good vector allowing him to capitalize on some distance. But it's mostly the same run as Eagles, just slightly more optimized. So yeah, he earned himself a time of 13.9 seconds and 28 points. Um, so uh, who's left? Uh, we got first place. Uh, uh, guys, are you surprised that it's Zyvler? I'm not. Anyways, Zyvler here, first place, earning himself 30 points, got a time of 13.53 opts to use uh, the other checkpoint, and that down throw onto the P-Switch was definitely the thing that got him the win, because there is no way that route should have been that fast, but that down throw onto the P-Switch allowed him to move in such a way where he was able to fall sooner. So that definitely allowed him to edge out against Eagle and Blip, who used the other route, which honestly I thought would be the best route, but Zyvler proving me wrong here, uh, this route ended up being the fastest, be just because of that down throw. Let's watch that one more time, just because I really like how clean that down throw was. So yeah, he captures the uproot immediately, does the same old thing with the poles and the regionals. But down throwing that P-switch, like I said, definitely won him this task. His dive into the checkpoint actually wasn't super optimal. He didn't dive straight on into it. So he did lose a little bit of time there, but honestly, it didn't even matter because, like I said, that down throw onto the P-switch saved him so much time. It allowed him to fall so much sooner, and that just got him the W. So let's see if I remembered all the times correctly, since I wasn't allowed to look at the slide the whole time. Yeah, I actually did. Holy shit. All right. Yeah, don't mess with my memory. Anyways, so that was the rundown for task two. Those are the results. The times were kind of all over the place. I kind of expected them to be a little bit closer, but overall we got like an eight second gap between 13th and 1st. I guess that's reasonable. Anyways, if you guys haven't seen yet, task three is located in the Light Kingdom. You can warp or respawn anywhere, um, and the objectives are... And the objectives that you can choose from, you need to complete five of the eight, pop two bubbles, enter exit a glass dome, collect two regionals, spawn a coin from a bush, flinch two mermaids, 
You can only do one mermaid from the three at the top. Uh, capture a cheap cheap. Open two flowers. Or start a timer challenge. It can be music notes or the scarecrow. So with that in mind, uh, task three will be due next next Sunday night. Like normal. Not really too much to say here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys liked this new format. I'll try and figure out a workaround. That way I don't have to remember all the times like that. Or maybe I'll just write them down on like a sheet of paper and do it that way. I'm surprised I even remembered all the times and positions. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think the new format works in a way where we don't have to risk internet problems. So that was a very good idea from uh, Carbon. He uh, DM DM'd me about it, and I do agree. I don't like um, questionable quality. That was kind of out of my control. So, again, I'm sorry about that. And we'll uh, keep up with this format for the rest of the season, probably. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy Task 3.